Hey everyone, welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting, another episode of the Indie Show. We're talking more Black Hammer tonight, we're talking the unbelievable Unteamed, and I got my man Daryl read your comics with me. What's going on, Daryl? What's up? I'm on time. You are? On, well, yeah, you were on time, and I don't know, supposedly we got other people that are going to join us, but they just... You know, they knew they were late. They just kept talking. So we're, we're just going to start without <laughs> them. Get it, just get it going now. Yeah. They don't even get time to go get a drink of water or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then get over here. <laughs> the life of YouTubers. And that's the life of YouTubers. Yes. So we had my man GT Key hanging out early. Appreciate it. Eric was also hanging out early. And then, yes, shockingly, not shockingly, John and Justin are late. Oh, look. Look who decided to grace us with their hey. presence. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I was just hitting the like button on this show, but then I realized it started without me, so thumbs down. <laughs> he got lost know. in the green room. That's all that happened. Heck. Unbelievable. It's a party back there. It's a party back there. Hey, hey it's Tony. It's Tony. Uh, for any of my viewers that weren't just watching John and Justin on his channel... Old Wolf has a uh, yes. charity stream coming up on Saturday that I think at least three of us are participating in at some point. I think uh, you and I are doing the commigories. We're doing guaranteed. commigories on Saturday night. We're going to stop back later and drink some bourbon. He's doing. He's got Rod coming on to do a lame refrain. He's got all kinds nice. of stuff going on. And at some point, I guarantee you, during the middle of the night, he will be passed out, and other people will just be talking on his channel, and he'll the, just be passed a, out on camera. A channel so, takeover. Yeah, I'm genuinely <laughs> worried that it, that I'm going to have to stay up all night just to make sure the stream doesn't fail. That, it's, <laughs> that it just doesn't collapse into calamity. Yeah, so, all you. All but you he's know. doing it for a good cause, so go support it, and yeah. yeah, so go check out his channel, and maybe at some point John will be kind enough to drop his link in the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll get, <laughs> yeah, I'll get started. When you go ahead and ramble a little bit about what we're here for. Yeah, so <laughs> Albert's also here. He's already done so, the uh, <laughs> so, Yeah, we're talking about Black Hammer and the. They're un- they're on issue three right now, John. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say I'm very proud at how tightly I kept that show. You did very we, good. We yeah. didn't go too far over it. No, it wasn't like the two hour. It be an hour show. <laughs> no, it's last time it was an hour was like twenty twenty. JP, come on. <laughs> this guy did a two hour one. Not too yeah, long it's ago. more of a two hour show nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, we were way under. So yeah. that's okay. A couple weeks and I plan on being there. We're going like two, two and a half. That's yes, <laughs> exactly. Be ready. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking unbelievable unteen. So uh, which is kind of the Teen Titans X Men sort of of the. Uh, the Black Hammer universe, a little bit of little vibes, Doom at Patrol. least. That. What would you say? A little like original Doom Patrol. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little bit of original Doom Patrol. That's a good call, too, Daryl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Daryl, what did you think of the unbelievable Unteens? I thought it was pretty good. It was nice, like a little quirky tale. Um, it was cool to see uh, Jack Sabbath again. We haven't really delved into him since the uh, he appeared in those the earlier part of the main story. So uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a fun, it was very, it was a very quick and light read. It went a lot faster than I expected it to. No. Uh, John, what about you? This is the first. I'm going to have to go. Yeah. My car just started honking. So I'm going to go turn my alarm off. So you get to go to Justin first. <laughs> okay. It sounds like we're like outside with the car. That's loud <laughs> yeah, that like <laughs> so Justin, what did you think of this one? Yeah. So um, interesting that, yeah, you bring up, um, you know, obviously for me, X-Men was the first thing that it kind of crossed my mind. I was curious what your guys thoughts were with, uh, you know, if you were going to mention Teen Titans at all, because I, you know, I'm newer to the Teen Titans. I'm still learning, uh, you know, some of the characters even and and what might tie into kind of what this is. So, but you did mention them. So yeah, curious. And then uh, Doom Patrol, Daryl, as you mentioned, like, I don't know anything about them, but um, that's cool to hear that, you know, kind of a little, little bit of a crossover with that too, in terms of some of the character builds and stuff. Um, Yeah. Overall, um, I feel like it was a missed opportunity for something a little better than what we got um, here overall. I still enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. And, uh, and overall, like, I like that there's a subtle tie in. We got Jack Sabbath, as Daryl mentioned before. Um, I just couldn't connect with the characters enough to care about some of the bigger things that happened at the end. And maybe you guys can change my mind later, but, um, I just felt like Daryl said it was short. And I think that's a big part of it. It It's like four issues. Um, I just didn't have that connection that I've had with 
you know, some of the other characters we've had in Black Hammer so far. Um, and I feel like there's some really emotional moments in this. And it just like missed the bar for me where it just it was just like, OK, you know, just kind of turn the page. So um, I don't know. But I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts as we as we dive into this. OK, John, this is your first time reading yeah. one of these for the show for the first time. You have not previously <laughs> I, read. I read it immediately after our last episode. Right. I basically yeah. pulled it off the shelf and read it. for Yeah. So I'm to the place where you all are now. And I totally agree, Justin. Um it's too short. I mm -hmm. think this could easily have been two four issue minis, and I think we would have gotten a little bit more out of it. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's almost. I imagine it. It would have been better something like Stephen King's It, where it's like, give me give me a handful of issues of them as the old guys, and then give me a handful of issues of them as the young guys, and I want to see like this crossover to where it comes at the end. I just it, everything just felt it was at a breakneck pace, and it just didn't connect emotionally i always say like these this there's two layers to what i love about black hammer it's the emotions and the nostalgia like the mm. the nostalgia kicks where i feel like i'm watching a new version of of something that i have a lot of love for from the nostalgia era and then the emotions of like wow they've taken it to a new emotional plane because they're able to update and modernize some of these things this clicked on the nostalgia thing just fine for me but it just never hit on the emotional level for me. See, I hate it when I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like at the edge of my seat wondering what JP is going to say, especially after John talks. I knew like, exactly oh, where JP oh, where is this going? I could, tell, yeah. I could tell by the way he was reacting to Justin that he was yeah. right there. So, okay, okay, good. Good so like, I did enjoy it. I will, I will say that. But like you guys, there's not enough here... Like, I think every one of us said this. I mean, even Daryl said the same thing, basically. There's not enough here to make you care about these characters. Right. Like, Snapdragon is our Raven, our Jean Grey, Phoenix, kind yeah. of, you know, mm -hmm. is who she's meant to be. Like, Ray, the first thing I went to was that with this white Wraith or whatever is Trigon and Raven, his her dad, like the interdimensional thing and all that kind of stuff. But there's not enough here to like, unlike with Teen Titans or whatever, which obviously it's a much longer run, but you have no attachment to Snapdragon. Yeah. So that when this happens to her, like when you find her back in the coma, it's like, okay, there's no, <laughs> like, here's the story point that we're on. Right. And there also seemed to be like no real world consequence. Of her being taken by this monster or whatever, not that other than to her, yeah. I guess. But like, yeah, yeah. like, so there were no real like real world stakes either to this. So all the stakes were personal stakes, and they didn't because it's so short. They didn't give you enough time to have a personal stake in the characters. If that makes any sense, at least yeah. for me, like, yeah, and yeah, it needed. They just all needed more development. For me, and uh, and we just, I mean, they try to give you a little bit of the love triangle stuff, and they, and a little bit of the team tension, but it's also for. I felt like it was forced. It wasn't. It wasn't allowed to be like develop in a way that felt natural or made you like have an investment. Is kind of where I'm at. Yep. I say all that and say that I did enjoy it. It was a light. It was a fun read. It yeah, just, I don't want to make it sound like I hated it. Because again, yeah, I, I didn't feel like, like it was a missed opportunity. Like there's, there else, or, I, I feel like there's always an intellectual standpoint and an emotional standpoint when it comes to Black Hammer. And the intellectual one, I was very interested. Like on an intellectual level of like, ooh, this is kind of cool. It's They're getting into their Uncanny X-Men, Teen Titans era. This is kind of interesting. I like some of But it was all intellectual it never reached an emotional level for me. And that's, that's yeah. the thing that I was missing. And I was, and, and to Justin's point, it was like, it could have totally been there. It could have yes. totally worked and it could have totally happened. My yeah. question, and, and and maybe this is something for, for all of you and Daryl can chime in on was the, this is probably we're nearing the very end of black hammer at dark horse. Uh, Jeff Lemire has signed an exclusive thing with Image, and it's very likely that future volumes of Black Hammer will be from Image. Is it possible that Dark Horse just had no interest in 
giving him enough issues to tell these stories and he was forced to put him out in the size they wanted. It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how their deal is because I, I don't know. Like they have like one more of these coming out. There's which is like the, the visions? Yeah, the vision stuff. Which, which is the prime, the main stuff. Black Hammer storyline. Yeah, but that's not even really his stuff. That's other people dabbling. Yeah. And then I know there's been an ongoing other Black Hammer, like Black Hammer Reborn thing. That's yeah, been going on. But like at this point, I like we're almost through almost everything that's really been published and out there. Yeah. Unless there's something coming out right now that I don't know about. Because I think Reborn's even done, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, it's I do feel it like just, it it was what what I kept thinking as I was reading it was is it possible that what was the the issues Dark Horse was having as far as being financially solvent and the the interest in Jeff Lemire to retain control and the desire to move to image i wondered if that was in any way affecting the quality that we were getting yeah because mm, I, I don't know it's all like, hypothetical i guess but yeah but i do feel like a little bit of this was sort of a oh, i need to i haven't done a, I haven't done a teen team thing yet they'll yeah. do one and it and like like the structure is there like john talked about for something that could be really really good it's just not completely developed and i don't know it's an interesting thing if part of the switching from dark horse to to uh image coming up if that was part of it i don't remember exactly when this was originally came out either in issues because it's been a little while yeah i want to say like tw- yeah i want to say like 2020 i remember it being on the shelf at one point when it was first yeah. coming out because i remember looking i was curious about it and someone was like oh that's a black hammer thing and i wasn't reading black hammer at the time and i was like oh all right, yeah, well, maybe I'll pass on that then. At that at that time, anyways. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I think uh, again, just a, a missed opportunity that even if like you, they did, they told the story in a, in, a, in a way that we learned about the Black Hammer crew, like the the crew yeah. that we know and love. What if they, you know, what if he did something like that more? I mean, also think about all, all the series that we've read so far. I don't think any of them have been just four issues, right? I mean, I think everything's well, been at least five or more. Five. Uh, uh, Seems like a lot of and yeah. this one even includes like a free comic book day. Yeah, it, in my right, opinion, right. I mean, we can get into it, I guess, but, it, but it doesn't even belong. Like, it didn't I don't, do anything. Yeah, it. It, right. You it, get a is that in the hardcover, right. Justin? I, it uh, is. JP? It is. Yeah. The the little intro with what's your face? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the one with the lady dragonfly. Yeah, yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, that's in there. It yeah, just seemed I, like it was yeah. unnecessary, and it was right. kind of like all over the place. And then you get, then you get this cover. Then you get into you, the yeah, after you get that. Yeah. So yeah, I was wondering, like, I was like, wow, we're already. I was looking at like how much I had left to go, and I'm like, we're, you know, we just took like you know, ten pages. Well, and, it basically, I mean, the whole little intro is basically setting up Black Sabbath or Jack Sabbath. I Black Sabbath. Jack Sabbath. <laughs> I love that band. <laughs> and, I read it that way several times. <laughs> like, in his quest, it really, because it really goes all the way through, like, him finding out that he was part of a comic book. Yeah. And it really goes all the way through to this. But interestingly enough, uh, it's like, your fate is intertwined with Black Hammer, so he goes to Black Hammer, but that's not where it picks up. Yeah. Right. That was a little yeah. odd. So it was a kind of an odd intro i mean it was i guess it was a point it was appropriate in the fact that it gave us this page but it yeah. but it really doesn't tie directly into what comes no. like it right. just it proves to me yet again how awful free comic book day comics are at being useful in either drawing new people in or entertaining people who've read it before because it doesn't do either right. <laughs> like it just they're always such a disappointment yeah but yeah, yeah. so that was just kind of random yeah um I mean, it does it a decent. I guess it does set up who he was and what. But do you need it? Because you could just read issue no. one and get it, right? <laughs> no, you could absolutely just read issue one and get it. And before we get into issue one, or I just well, wish I guess, the people who did the free comic book day issues were interested in bringing new people in. I yeah. think if they, it was used more as like a springboard, it would probably be more successful. Which mm. was the original idea behind Free Comic Book Day. Hey, look, see? Yeah. This guy gets it. This guy gets it. <laughs> okay, so issue one. Um, what did you think of the setup here? The setup is there's a we're at a Comic-Con, which is something we've all been to. 
<laughs> you know, there's an artist working on a story and doing sketches and meeting fans and um, only to be uh, interrupt when this ghost comes to visit her. What did, what did you guys think of the, like the setup here? Um, <laughs> Justin, I'll let you go first. So I have to say, when I'm reading the beginning of this and seeing the Comic-Con scenes, immediately my question goes... Is this what conversations look like between regular fans and artists? Because mine don't go anything like that. <laughs> that seems so normal and and human like. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like stuttering and like not knowing what to say <laughs> when I meet like Chris Claremont. You know, like no big deal. Uh, I'm like, wow, this. You know, this like when John well. met Tom Taylor and thought he was just a guy running. <laughs> yeah, like you and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then I like looked at his name badge and said Tom Taylor, and I was <laughs> you're like, oh crap, <laughs> you're actually Tom Taylor. And he's like, yeah, I am. You're like, when's this artist coming back? I don't know if you know the root, the art, the. I was like, look at the well, art, you, talk about. Oh, that's really cool. Like, yeah, you even get that in here. Are you Jane? You know. Yeah. Still one of the most awkward moments in my life. Yeah. So I, I, I love this beginning. Just laughing at you know the relatability, I guess, more so than anything else. Definitely took a turn, like you said, like a complete jump compared to the little intro that we get. Uh, prior to this in the free comic book day issue so wasn't expecting that either um also i i really like the artwork from this guy uh ruben d ruben i don't know i, I know he's done work some of the prior art uh, yeah art that we've looked at or, or read um yeah. did he do so, girl weird may, uh yeah maybe maybe i i don't know it says tyler cook on mine art well there's, there's two different artists i think in here oh okay okay I think the two sections are different artists. Okay. Like, well, oh, yeah. The, the one that right. does the Comic Con stuff with like the the dotted eyes, like I I like that uh, that artwork that we get from from some of this earlier stuff. Ruben, so David yeah, Rubin did the free Comic Book Day page, but the rest oh. of it was Tyler Cook. Oh, okay. okay. Then this is Cook, I think. That okay. I'm yeah. At. Um, but anyways, yeah. So initial thoughts, I, I thought it was cool, relatable. Um, but um, you know, she's getting like ramen noodle and stuff, and um, and then yeah, th then Jack Savage shows up out of nowhere. So um, interesting. Seems to have a pretty popular book though. Had quite a bit of fans. And yeah, stuff. totally. They're all concerned about how long the series was going to last. So. Yeah, they're talking about the characters. <laughs> like, oh, don't tell me this person dies. Like all this stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would feel like if I was like a, a creator. When I started seeing people come up in cosplay, I would be like, oh, I've made it. I've made it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> My creation has done something to, you know, inspire somebody to make a cosplay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I definitely agree on the art. Like I like the, not a lot of artists can balance two very dramatically different forms. And I think this artist, Tyler Crook does a great job with both the, the like, present day stuff that's supposed to look a little more gritty or real where mm -hmm. like we're getting these sort of almost watercolory kind of things yeah that are a lot more great the palette's very gray and muted and brown versus the comic book stuff that we get which has a lot more color and looks like a traditional it yeah. looks like a great you know, dave cockrum x-men kind of a thing you know where you get yeah the it just feels like an older comic and i think he, he the balance of this is not easy and crook is doing color art uh, he's doing the inking he's yeah. doing the color yeah. and yeah. the letters yeah even how the it. even how on your the some of the pages you're showing john like the the dirtiness of some of the pages i really liked as well yeah like, like the, the, there's the bent like corners bent and corners like, and wrinkles yeah, that, and yeah yeah so i i like the art style again it's an intellectual thing it's not necessarily an emotional thing Right. But the, the idea is that he, he has crafted something that really drew me in a lot of different yeah. times. Like, uh, pun intended, I suppose. Uh, really uh, <laughs> captivated me. My, my only beef about the uh, comic book style of it, like where it's in the comic book as the young, is she's a young creator. I mean, she says she's only like 30-something. But when we go to the comic book pages, it's almost like they're trying to do like a silver, early Bronze Ages style. <laughs> And the comic page too is even aged and like beat up, like it's you know. Yeah. I didn't even but, think about this. This is a great I mean, point. Yeah. It's still cool style and everything. I mean, like aesthetically, it's pleasing to read the book, but like if you start to apply that little bit of logic to it, like, yeah, well, it doesn't really look quite like this, but it should. Yeah, yeah I 
just dawned on me as well. That's very yeah, interesting. Instead of making it like a new book, it is very much like an old book. Because yeah. it should because if she's it's, writing it now, she's it currently should writing be a modern, modern comic. But yeah. I didn't even, that that this is really dawning on me for the first yeah. time. Yeah. No, that's interesting. I had I hadn't really that really didn't register for me either. It was just, you know, I was thinking, yeah, old school comic and then the modern thing. But you're right, they do like age the well, you know, it was not, well. It's nineties, I guess. So it's the kids. Were that long, so. <laughs> kids were taking care of them yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, what about you, Daryl? What did you think of our introduction here to this little world as we get started? Um, you know, it gets the story going. Like, I guess I, it was a little confusing to go from the free comic book day thing to this. Uh, you're just kind of lost. Is like, wait, what's going on? So he's visiting the. He's visiting the comic creator or the comic he's in. And then it's like, oh, she's writing comics about their past and doesn't remember. So, no. you know, there's, I guess you might say a little cliche to it to some degree. But, um, yeah. you know, it, it was interesting. I mean, it, it, it got the story going, the light breeziness, and it goes fast. I mean, he visits her, convinces her, and then... You know, we get the full little flashbacks, and then all of a sudden, we're she's firing up her powers, and we're on to the next issue. <laughs> we'll say, yeah, John showed that page earlier, but that page where she like right her powers is really, really well done. That is yep. excellent art. So agreed. And it's almost like the coloring on that particular page is almost a a blend of the like modern grittiness and the comic book style. It's like yeah, it's, little, it's like in between a little bit. No, I would agree with that. The way they they do make it a little more of the of a shift between the two styles. I think you're right. right and hats off to the artist since he did do all all of the art mm. for that stylistic decision. Lefty, I'm glad that we got you checking out Black Hammer. I do think it's there's a, a it's a universe that's not like any other, and it certainly is uh, uh, cer- something that I think has a little something for everybody. Uh, even if Unteens isn't like the greatest thing that we've ever loved, I still think it's an interesting universe to explain. And especially if you have love for I any of these. The Do- we mentioned Doom Patrol, Teen Titans, Uncanny X-Men. There's definitely a lot that's being mined here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. And, you know, and I think, so yeah, the first issue is really about him finding her uh, and finding Jane and helping her remember that they that what's the story she's been telling actually happened and she's been actually you know writing about her life and that she has powers yeah and then with this we kind of get into the the second issue really kicks off with our main kind of flashback or the start of our main flashback and what little of the team we get and this is where i think was the missed opportunity because this goes for one two three four five six what seven pages mm-hmm. before we flash back to the beginning, and that should have been like an, an issue. issue at least. An issue, two yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. an issue in the even if you were going back and forth, like one issue in the past, one issue current. Like if they'd have done something like that, agreed. Just that little mm-hmm. bit of expansion would have like really helped for me. I mean, I realized they jump back to the future and then they jump back to it for a few more pages, but I mean, I think it was like seven, and you get like. Eight, nine, ten. I mean, there's only like eleven. There's only like total, maybe fifteen pages in the past of the yeah. comic book, and it's like there's just not enough there. But I mean, it's well done. It's just not enough, at least for me. What did you guys think of when we do get the past? What did you think of the background, uh, John? I'll let you go first this time. I mean, I I got a ton of uncanny X Men vibes like early on the. The like training room that's like the danger room, the danger room yeah. right? Danger room, yeah. <laughs> the the Professor the big, X is like the dad. The big <laughs> Russian uh, uh, guy that can turn his body yeah. to be a, a <laughs> yes. vulnerable, sh- you know, form very Straka. much a colossus kind of guy, yeah. but it's diamond and coal. You know, he's like yeah. split down the middle. I, as much as the Professor X guy has a vibe for me, I've been watching a lot of Umbrella Academy. He definitely comes off as the dad uh, with the monocle and that. Who's okay, that. yeah. So yeah like he, that. 
they obviously gave him a ton of hair, so he, yeah. he does not a Professor X. Clone. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but I was definitely getting some vibes of like you know of, of Umbrella Academy with him, and you know you could look at uh, the the guy in, in Doom Patrol. The the, the t- I've never read Doom Patrol books, but I've seen the show, and there's the yeah. guy who bringing them all together. Mm. Uh, so there's definitely that quality. But I, yeah, so I I I liked uh, the, the this is this is where the nostalgia kick came in right where you're right. reading it and going like oh i remember that issue of uncanny x-men where they were like fighting or when she loses control of her powers and they're all scared of her and you know uh the little love story mm-hmm. romance stuff that's going on he loves her but she loves him like there's all this kind yeah. of stuff i i could and that those vibes especially gave me teen titans vibes where you get the you know everybody has a crush on somebody and you know yeah. the, that whole teen romance thing the triangles um, of love yeah, yeah. And uh, so I got, I like that stuff a lot. Um, yeah. Emotionally, again, yeah, to your point, I, we're not invested enough to really get an appreciation for those characters. And I think this is where uh, a bigger format that allowed for, like you're saying, full issues or, you know, I, you could have definitely done something that uh, would have done it more justice. Yeah, I sure. like this page a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Is that uh, this? That's, yeah, the all pink. It's one. like Phoenix right there, man. Right, yeah. and a ton of pink, which uh, you know, Justin and I were yes. talking about the use of John pink Byrne, and purple yeah. in those burn and uh, cockromat issues. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. What about you, uh, Justin? What did you think of the this whole comic background? The background we got here. Yeah. So, like the way that, as you said, JP, like set, you know, seven ish pages just in this second issue of the of the flashback stuff i would have loved to see a full issue of this um i think technically uh, jeff lemire could definitely save this in not save i mean it's still it's still good i don't want to put it down but build on he could build on it yeah he could put out like a, a four issue mini you know a year from now or whatever and really hash out their younger years and i think that that would be something I would really appreciate assuming, you know, I enjoy it, but um, to maybe then read that and then go back and read this again and maybe have a little bit more emotion to some of this stuff. But yeah, like this, this seven page like section to me is like, you know, two or three Claremont pages, you know, like in the beginning of his Claremonts, you get some, you know, crazy, like, you know, story off, off cut, but it's not even the main story, you know, and then it, then it should have went into something else. I feel like that, that elaborated more on, on their powers, on how things work, on their, their history or where they're from uh, a little bit more on the relationship. Like you said, JP, they do touch a tiny bit on mm-hmm. their relationships on who's liking who, or who's jealous of what, but yeah. not enough to like really get that, they love each other or that they are jealous of each other or whatever. Um, one other thing to hold up here. Um, I, I love John. How many times have we seen Colossus rip out a rip tree? Rip out yeah. a tree. You yeah. know, like that was to me when I saw that, I'm like, okay, yeah. Straka Colossus. I love it, man. Um, <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Uh, I like the color styling and everything else. Um, Snapdragon is like a, 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 a black metal uh, band member of some sort with her, her paint, her face paint and stuff like, yeah. yeah, it was definitely wicked, but yeah, again, it was hard to like kind of figure out what they all could do. I, I guess they elaborate a little better on some characters than others, but um, anyways, yeah. Lie, I like, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I liked it. I just, like you said, JP, I want, I did want more. I wanted more of that. So kind of a miss, miss spot there. For sure. Carol, what about you? Anything to add to, just um, I mean, I felt like their powers and stuff were pretty defined. They did kind of like get into their relationships, mostly with thought balloons. Um, for a minute, I was confused as to who was in the relationship with who, but as yeah. it went on, it was more clear. Um, now, I did like the transition out of it, though, with the little tear of the comic page where it like transitioned. Oh, yeah, the, the art. Music. Yeah, I like that a lot when it ends. That was like, that was like John keeps saying, it's, it's the intellectual st- side of the creation of the book, you know, that really it's the things like that that was like, oh, that's really cool. I well, like and I loved, speaking of that, just that transition, I love the opposite end of that when he, when they get Straka to remember and the yes, comic is on his brain. That was cool. I, I love that. that. Really I love well that a lot, actually. Yes. Yeah. I thought that art was that was really well handled. 
that was something like I haven't really seen that done before. You know, yeah. like, I mean, we've I, you, there's been plenty of books in the past that are kind of like this. You know, the comic book is the past, and the, the characters are kind of in the main real world, and they use Alan Moore does that. Right. Yeah, you know, it goes I mean, back crossover. I mean, Donny Cates has been doing crossover, which is the same kind of thing: comic book characters coming into the real world, mm -hmm. and, right? But just that explosion of the pages through the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just thought that was a that was a really neat touch to uh, you know just exploring exploring this idea artistically or visually. Yeah. Agreed. So really, the rest of that second issue is about them regathering the team, and they find out that uh, Carlos, the other member, like after they get Straka mm -hmm. and they wake him up, that Carlos, Kid Boom, didn't forget, and he's actually been taking care of Snapdragon, Snap, or something Snapdragon yeah. the whole time, and she's been in a coma whole, the whole time. And this goes back to my whole thing about the stakes. Because you see here that, like, and when particularly when you get, like, after that in the start of the 30s, you get what actually happened to her. And what happened is the stakes were just personal to her and to them. Mm -hmm. And not, like, unlike, like, with Raven or Jean, where it's the destruction of the whole world, like the Phoenix or Trigon, right. or whatever, it's like the whole world's at risk. It's really just a very personal yeah. stake mm -hmm. for her, which just doesn't carry enough weight because we don't have any investment in Snapdragon yet. Yeah. Yeah, we barely know her. Yeah, we don't all we got is a little bit of flashback pages of her. So there's no the investment you have is secondarily through Jack. <laughs> but in some way That's just his guilt too. That's really. just his guilt. Yeah. And it's like yeah. um and really a lot of it is Sort of his his arrogance brought a lot of this on in terms of his guilt and stuff. So, what did you think when we see the events that actually led to this, that to where they're at, um, and Jack just like screwing up and then screwing up again and then screwing up again? And um, Daryl, you go first this time. Well, it made me think twice about Jack Sabbath's. Uh, thought process <laughs> you know, like, why does he keep trying to do this like, and then even even after when they come back he's still like we got to do it again <laughs> but like you were saying that the stakes it, it is it's just like it, this the what do they call it the white wraith or whatever yeah yeah uh which isn't white nor really a wraith but, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway you're like he keeps calling her my bride, come to me, my bride, and like I have her and all this stuff. And you're like, oh, he's doing he's got some big plans yeah. for for having her. But yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, he just gets her and yeah, in the real world, <laughs> she's it. in a coma. Everybody else forgets and goes and lives like 10 years of their lives just in yeah. the, you know, mundane life. I guess that's the stake. So wait, we can go I live a mundane life. So uh Daryl, this doesn't scream white race to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it's Mephisto. It's like, yeah. it's like a crustaceanus. He does look crustaceanus, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so nothing about I mean it has a skull face. I guess that's kind of wraithy, but it's you know, it's funny because Justin and I in our omnibus for X-Men have just read what I think is one of the stories that is is inspiring this sequence, which is the uh, the creation of magic, right? The right. Uh, Ileana Rasputin, oh, yeah. and Velasco, the and the Devil. Yeah. What's that? Have you read the miniseries already? No, we've read the issue where she ages up because Velasco t attempts to take her as his right. consort or whatever, mm -hmm. which is very much like this. You know, you yeah. have the demonic villain taking a young child who can't control her abilities and trying to then like craft her as their tool and yeah. the heroes rushing to rescue her and bring her back. And so yeah. there's definitely some of that Ileana mm -hmm. Rasputin character here as far as that story. But of course they're melding that with, like you say, Starfire or, 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 or the Phoenix. Um, but it was, it was, I think I almost appreciated that storyline more because of what Justin and I had just been reading recently. I thought, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this is like totally 
drawing homage I, I, from I, I, the yeah. 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 So the proximity I, having read that storyline again, I think probably mm -hmm. played into me enjoying it a little bit more. If yeah. I if oh, I had, cool. let's say, if, if we had read this is, these issues a year ago, before I had written back, I may not have remembered it as freshly and then yeah. therefore not connected the dots as easily. Yeah, right. It's a good point. No, that makes sense. And I didn't necessarily connect the dots to magic, but you're right. And, well, and in well, some ways, this is closer to magic than it is to, like, Raven, because Raven, he's, like, it's her dad, and he's trying to use her as a conduit to come into our world, whereas... Right. That guy was like trying to steal magic into limbo, and yeah. like so, she was and stuck her, there. Yeah, it wasn't. Again, it was a personal stake there, like this is, as opposed to a wider worldwide stake kind of thing. For sure. Mm -hmm. Didn't so, he want to like end up using magic though to get out himself? Was it that I'm sure magic? eventually that was it. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's just it be, I think the proximity to reading it. It made me enjoy this more. It was like it 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 fueled the enjoyment in this sequence a little bit for me. See, when we were the second I saw this demon guy, I was like, "Oh wow, here we go. We just read this." <laughs> yep, yep. No, you're right, uh, Justin. What about you? What did you think of this whole sequence? Yeah, I was wondering if, um, or I, I guess I just wish that we got a little bit more from this this wraith on like what his plans were or like i don't know more Near than just, yeah yeah right yeah <laughs> instead of just being this big bad you know evil person or whatever uh what was he planning to do with the bride i know he's kept referencing bride come to my uh, come my bride all this stuff um but like there was no i don't know i guess i just wanted a little bit more with that and we, we never really got any detail in that regard so again just kind of part of you know what you get with a four issue uh kind of mini series here with yeah. only so much to elaborate on but yeah and of course yeah. the fallout of this of getting the backstory is we get you know jack's like we gotta save her and they're like that's what put her in this mess in the first place is yeah. you wanting to rush in and they uh and we get the obligatory team reunites and then splits up only mm -hmm. to you know reunite again yeah. um when Jack tries to go save her anyway, <laughs> not very smart. Um, I didn't blame the dude though for wanting to go off. I mean, he was like, Whoa, since we like, I came with you, but like, wait a minute, I do have a family now, and yeah, I have to think of them. <laughs> like, I can't right. no, like, run back into the situation that failed the first time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the yeah. others like having hesitation is completely justified because, yeah, like. They don't. He doesn't have a plan no. for like dealing with this thing. It's just we're gonna go in back there and fight him. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. it resulted in him dying the last time yeah. and her being taken because yeah. he had the same him. thing we did last time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, so yes, yeah, like everybody's rusty with their powers except me. <laughs> right. Right. They're completely justified in telling him to buzz off. Yeah. <laughs> like. And then, so, but eventually, of course, he goes, and we get we get to see that she's, at least her spirit or her mind or her soul or however you want to think of it, is still trapped there when Jack makes his way back. And eventually, of course, they all decide, we're going to come help. Um, and then this was another part where I thought it's just so fast. And, like, and then in, like, two pages, they destroy him. <laughs> like, this villain they couldn't beat before. <laughs> I was like... Boom, boom, and it's done. Winners! Yeah. <laughs> it is still roughly the battle. I mean, yeah. there, uh, there was no other detail or explanation. As to no, like, it's like, unteed, unite. Yeah, charge. Charge. And then the next page, they hit him a couple times. There's one page of them hitting him. And then winners, winners, chicken dinner. <laughs> I mean, like... Mike, so, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to like jump too much further ahead, I guess, but do you, cause I don't think they specify. I mean, this, this, this irked me here at the end Go for because it. she it. seems to imply that she's going to die, but they don't ever say that she dies. Yeah. Mm. Talking about Snapdragon? Yeah. yeah. I well, kind of wish there was just a... Oh yeah, the body going into the van. 
The yeah. body going into the van is but the only thing. Can't even you tell if she's like wrapped in a blanket or is she in a body bag because it's not oh. black. Uh. Like her head I mean, could be there at the other end and she's just wrapped in a blanket. I don't know. Yeah, are they moving her to a new hospital? So to me, I was. I would have loved all. Just give me the heart monitor in the background with a straight line, and where mm. there's no confusion for me. Yeah. yeah. But if you look at the hospital bed, there's nothing like that. It's just yeah. done. I feel I just wanted the emotional hit didn't hit because of the lack of specificity for me. That's I assumed that that's what they were saying, but right. they didn't give it to me. And, and again, I wanted more. I like in this that, scene, that, that scene could have been the line. They should they could have showed that moment. That scene should have had us weeping yeah that, that that they do all this for her yep but it's really just to allow her the chance to die yep and that should have been an emotional kick yeah. but it didn't have it, it like yeah. it wasn't there no. uh, that that moment when jack feels like see we saved you is not really no no that's not what just happened what happened right. was you allowed her to finally be able to let go no. And yeah. that didn't play. No. For me, at least. Uh, a yeah. lot of, the reason it doesn't play is partially because, yeah, there's some unclarity there. But again, we don't know Stand Dragon. That's like, what we I'm have saying. no investment in her right. as a character. Like, we have some investment in Jack. We have some investment in Jane through the story. Even Straka. Less, less in the Straka and Kid Boom and Carlos. Right. Like a little bit there, but I'll say that really the only one we have investment in to me is Jane, it's the only yeah. one really the, the comic book artist, the comic yeah. book yeah. artist. And I think it's because th it seemed to me at least that the intention was to give each one of these characters their own issue where you get to meet them and learn a little bit, of, and then they just stopped at some point and decided well, we'll just kind of smash a few of them in here together at the end. Yeah. You know, like it, it should have been one of Jane at the beginning, then one of Stroika in the second issue, and then one of uh, Carlos in the third issue, and one mm. of Snapdragon in the fourth issue, and one of Jack. Like we should have been given everybody and an that, issue and yes. fleshed this out a little bit. And you know that's how he normally Professor writes. Professor X, right? Like you give everybody their issue he, and expand this out enough to right. really, as you awaken each one of these characters or find each one of them in the real world. Even if it's just a headstone, you get a chance to then at least get their story. But I, I, we just didn't get that time. Which makes me really question kind of the points you made about like the publisher and all this other stuff. <coughs> because we know, especially from reading like Descender and Ascender, like, you know, Lemire has done this plenty of times where he really does hash out one character in one, you know, takes a full episode or one issue right. and hashes out a character. And yes, I agree. Like that would have been perfect for something like this, whether it took you know, two sets of, you know, six issue, uh, you know, miniseries or whatever, or however he would have done it. But um, even like, yeah, I mean, uh, even with Golden Gale and all that other stuff, like we, we did, we got like individual issues. Um, and that's going back to what I said in the beginning, like Miss Opportunity. I think that these characters um, have a lot of potential in them. And I think we would all really enjoy them, especially being that they are somewhat based off of, you know, nostalgic characters that a lot of people uh, know and love. Um, and and he just didn't do that. He just didn't. He didn't take that time to to do that. And again, if it whether that was a publishing thing or or other reasons um, that we won't know. But um, like I said, if if he goes out and and gives us another like mini series or some sort with with these characters uh, is is a way I think that it could really like you know bring I this mean, full circle. The other if he ever did. <laughs> every time you said that, I just want you to know every time you've said that at suggestion, JP's been like, oh, I really don't want more of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the look on his face is like I couldn't I eat like, another meal I feel of like this. That maybe though, like we're blaming this on Dark Horse. Oh no, it's definitely on like, Jeff. But hang on, but let me let me make right. my point. Like, is like we, he's done a lot of this of tapping a little bit here, tapping a little bit there, and maybe he didn't really have. He's like, oh, I need to do a team team and. Maybe this was all he had. He didn't really like, like he just. This is all he wanted to do with this group. Is he just wanted to like, here's the here's the team team for this universe. Because I do feel like he's bounced around. After we've gotten away from the main story, he's bounced around quite a bit on some of these, and it's clear to me as I've read some of these, I do feel like 
when he gets outside of the main group, there's less love for some of these characters, I think, in his writing than there is when he's in the main when he was with the main group. Like if you read Cosmogog and you read Barbalian and you compare that to this and um some of the others, I, I just don't know that there's just maybe it's just was like, oh, this is what this will be a fun story, and that was it. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's the case. I feel I mean, like Jeff Lemire is just too good. Publishing. I know John's talking about him going to Image, but he hasn't left Dark Horse yet. Right. right. Like it hasn't actually happened yet. Yeah. Well, he signed the deal already. It's just he's finished. He has to finish publishing whatever he was doing. Yeah. Or in in uh, before that deal was inked. Right, but uh, I mean, this was like two years ago. Is my point is when this came out. So. Because Visions has been published since, and he's done the whole Black Hammer Reborn thing since. So this wasn't like this came out. No, last week. I mean, no. did, did he just? Are you, do you think he just got lazy? Because I don't. I feel like that would be the only other explanation in that regard. Then, because I don't. Jeff think Lemire's about how many still stories good, Lemire writes. Like how many different books he has going at any given time. Totally. Yeah. No, I'm sure the lazy. Not. I think yeah. this, this maybe this is all he had for these this particular one, or all I mean, he was. This, Willing to commit to for this particular one, maybe. Right. Probably, so. probably a little of all the things you're discussing. Maybe yeah. less. Uh, I don't know if you're saying it came out over two years ago. Came out two years ago. Probably was in development for six to eight months before that. I don't know that the dark horse thing came into play so much as if we're putting that timeline on things. It, it could also have been just thrown it out there. Could have been something that had to do with the pandemic with pausing of, yeah, of, uh, of you too. know, some of the printing and, and processes that were going on there. I know that was, uh, you know, obviously a very unique time for everybody and, and companies and not knowing kind of what to do or, you know, as they shut down for a bit. So yeah. I don't know. That's just another, I don't know the exact year or, to, or you know, too. month, but I just think it's hilarious. We're spending a ton of time trying to figure out what went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> let me just call <laughs> Jeff. Guys. Let me just call, let me tweet at him right now. Well, we, all, like, we liked it. We're like, what went wrong? I like this. But what <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just wanted more. There's so much more potential. <laughs> well, and it just moves so fast. Like those la yeah, that yeah. last issue, like it's like, hey, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, it's just like like you get that first issue is this long drawn out. The whole first issue is him and Strobe, yeah, like figuring each other out. And then the second issue is they find the other three characters in the third issue. With, <laughs> they all like, go. <laughs> I mean, it's the whole backstory of what happened and everything. And then the fourth issue is the whole battle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, like, I mean, it's just like the snowball started at the top of the hill and it just kept picking up steam. Totally. And then it found a cliff. <laughs> yeah. Like, so accurate, overall, yeah. The, the character interactions were pretty good, though, all around. Like, yeah. Yeah. Between uh, Strobe and Kid Boom. You know, him feeling like they're a group of outsiders, but he was the outsider of the outsider group. But at the end, you know, they're like, you want to get some coffee sometime? And she's like, yeah, I think I'd like that, you know? So it's kind of like there's some acceptance there. And then, yeah. you know, even like we were sa you were saying, we don't have the connection to, uh, what's her name, Snapdragon, to die. But the whole part with her and Jack, she just leaves with Jack to go be a, I guess, a spirit, and we don't really know what happened there because you know Jack is still going to go back to the uh, Madam Dragonfly. Oh, one more thing to touch on though, there is an editor's note at one point in it about a time they met Madam Dragonfly in like oh some, the summer summer, the summer special. special. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I was like, now wait a minute. Have we read that? <laughs> right, right. It fooled me for a minute. I was like, is that something we've read? I can't remember. That was this. That was this yeah, spot here. Yeah, yeah. I, love, I did love that. I love that. Yeah. Well, I love that they just, yeah, they threw that into the old comic, into the comic series. Yeah. yeah. So you get yeah. the little crossover note. That was fun. Yeah. Um, one, two, one other thing, too, around that section. Th this part right here, uh, that panel of uh, Kid Boom, and he says, as like this whole ruckus goes down, he's like, "Don't get me wrong, but uh, or um, he, don't get me wrong, I'm worried about Snapdragon, but 
uh did did Straka and strobe come running out of the same bedroom like, he's like yeah uh, can we just time out for a second and did, did, did those two just come out of the same bedroom together? like i like it's yeah. a very night crawler statement uh yeah there you go yeah so there was little bits you know which i yes i to daryl to your point like that i did appreciate um well, you know that they still kept it the, despite our complaints like it's still a mirror and he still like does that kind of stuff and he's still yes. an excellent writer it's of just, course it just it just left us all wanting because it felt like it had a ton of potential and it yeah. didn't live up to all of it. So yeah. with that, uh, any final thought or anything else you want to bring up before we go to our final thoughts on this? Any other? When, when I meet up? when I meet Jeff Lemire, my my first question is going to be, "Were you sick uh, when the you hell were happened? It's going to be, <laughs> "What the hell happened?" <laughs> Listen, you're what, great. I love it. Really but... good as we <laughs> thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be like, uh, who who is this guy? Uh, can, we, can we get him out of here? I'm no I'm no good cop. Come on, man. I talk about yeah. <laughs> I tag you and everything. Man. Well, when I meet him, I'll ask that question and I'll be like, I'm no good comics. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's K N O W. I wouldn't do that. This Justin, guy right now. Justin, I wouldn't do that to you. Josh comics with kids. <laughs> <laughs> Like, my name is John. J. I mean John. Yes, you screwed up all of Black Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, final thoughts. I'll let I'll let Daryl got to start tonight. I'll let Daryl uh, start us off on our final thoughts here. Um, yeah. Overall, I thought it was good. You know, like it was a light breezy read, but I I enjoyed it overall. But I do agree that it was missing some of those the deeper. Uh, uh, sense of like connecting to the characters we needed a little bit more to make it like something that i would probably want to reread again some point or you know i mean i would still suggest it to somebody be like if you want to dive into some black hammer and you know you like x-men you like doom patrol you like teen titans this is you know like a, it's a fun story for that you know but overall i i, I enjoyed it so i will say that <laughs> and i love the art in it the art is top notch the art was very good yes yeah John, what about you? Uh, I mean, yeah, Daryl hit the nail on the head for sure. Uh, the the question of is it something I would want to reread again or read several times um, because it's so breezy, light, fast. I think it almost feels like, do I want you know? I, I'll remember it. Like, there's nothing like there's nothing that is going to come out of my mind when it comes. To, it's just so simple and quick. And uh, yeah, just the the feeling that there was a missed opportunity, perhaps. Uh, not a not a fail of by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, what could have been a home run, you're just like, oh man, there's so much, there's so much here, and I, I think that's true of this whole universe, Black Hammer, where there's always this feeling like this is a really rich, full universe, and there's so much going on here. You feel like that 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 there's a lot to mine. Yeah, Justin. Uh, I agree with you guys. Um, echo what you're saying. Yeah, overall, uh, I did enjoy it. I don't know if this is necessarily something I would uh, go back to and read like from time to time, like some of the other, so like like all of the other. I mean, I, I actually think this might be like towards the bottom end of if I had to rank all the different books that we've read here uh, and breaking down on, on your channel, JP. Um, this might be, you know, towards the back end, but uh, doesn't mean I, I hated it by any means, you know, still enjoyed it. Um, just wish, you know, was hoping for a little bit more um, than what we got. So uh, a lot to take away from it. Still, still little tie-ins to the bigger universe, which I appreciated. Um, and uh, the artwork, some of the, the different creative layouts and things like that. I also, you know, really liked and that they still were able to do a lot of that stuff. So um, the Comic-Con stuff and everything else was a lot of fun. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? I'm, if they ever revisited this, or um, I'm sure we'll see some of these characters at some other point tied somewhere else. Um, so at least we have a little background on it, and uh, I'll be interested to see more on that. Yeah, it's interesting you guys talking about rereading it. And as I think about this, it's, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. But like, if I want to read this type of story, I think I would go. Whereas some of the other Black Hammer things are unique enough and deep enough that. I would want to read them over maybe some other stories. I'm going to read Teen Titans. I'm going to read the X-Men. I'm going to read, like, if I mm -hmm. want this style of thing, I'm going to, I, this one's, because you're going to pick up a Cyclops issue and just no. dive right in. Yes, no. I hear you, JP. No. 
<laughs> we hear you, I get, man. No, we totally understand what you're saying. I get it. I, yeah, yeah. Quote it. Somebody type I thought that it would up. Be perfect on the feed. <laughs> Quoted J. That's, that's a clip. Makes, there, yeah. makes me want to read Cyclops X Men on this team <laughs> permanently, and then never write about this team again. Oh, I think I think of Rob Schneider at Home Alone. He's like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. And JP's like, well, hold on, hold on. That's not what I'm saying. Actually, can we work out a trade? Can we trade uh, Ed Boom and Cyclops and uh, or Strobe and Cyclops? Either one, and then like, yeah, and just make that permanent, permanent trade. And then Lemire never write about this team ever again. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. Um, I mean, it, I like I said, I enjoyed it. But I don't think I, it's not one I will come back to out of the Black Hammer ones for sure. Because if I'm going to read that, I'll I'll read Teen Titans. You know, yeah. yeah. Or, as far you know. as far as this nice hardcover, I will definitely go back to it for the for the first story. Uh, yeah, that we had broken it, it out. definitely like whereas yeah. Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy is one of the better things we've gotten that has no attachment to those mm-hmm. main six. Right. This is one of the worst things, that, and it's not bad. It's just not. No, just compared to everything else we've got. It's very shallow compared to everything else. I feel like it's we we dipped our toe in the pool and we didn't like is that all that's in that volume is skull digger and this? Yeah. Okay. And then Um, like the stuff at the back is all like they like all of these have like methods and you know and that kind of stuff at the back. I like that. That's that's cool. Oh yeah. The character design stuff. Yeah. Character design and pages and that kind of thing at the back. So yeah. All right. Well, with that, I want to thank 62 Lefty Blues and Albert and Kenneth for an old wolf for hanging out with us tonight. Always appreciated, folks. And uh, not sure exactly where or how we're going to proceed with Black Hammer just because there's a little bit of we've kind of caught up with most of the hardcovers and stuff that are out, but uh, we'll see where we go next. But we won't be too long, I think, before we read something else. So thank you guys for hanging out and we will catch you next time. Later.